23 past the hour, beautiful shot of Washington, D.C. Nice, bright, sunny day. Here with us now, senior fellow at the Brookings Institution, Thomas Mann, and resident scholar at the American Enterprise Institute, Norman Ornstein. They're co-authors of the new book, It's Even Worth, Worse Than It Looks. Oh, great. Great. Yeah, How the American constitutional system collided with the new politics of extremism. How could it be worse than it looks? Because it looks pretty bad, don't you think? I mean, Hugo Chavez's approval rating as high as Congress. I mean, is it... Is it? How is it worse? What do you than mean it looks? worse? It's 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 worse because people don't really understand the sources of uh, of the problem. They they imagine uh, a situation that um, actually is rather timid and tame compared to what's going on. We had been through a period uh, in which there is such an aggressive. Effort, uh, mm-hmm. which which entails really an oppositional parliamentary-like attack on the majority party using any means available, but because we operate in separation of power system, mm-hmm. where majorities are very hard uh, to marshal to approve anything, uh, we face absolute gridlock. So it's not they're all corrupt. It's much worse than that. And talking to people in Washington, uh, members of Congress and senators, you get a sense they don't know how to turn it around. I mean, that, that's what scares me a little bit. Norm, whether we're talking to Democrats, whether we're talking to Republicans, they all they they want really to. do. They want to get things done. It seems so as a collective group. This doesn't help them. The party structure's not letting them do it. It's tribal politics right now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've seen lots of countries where uh, people live together peacefully for a very long period of time, and then all of a sudden the tribal wars took them in places they didn't want to go. And that's what we are seeing. You think uh, Congress is Rwanda, our version uh, of Rwanda? Uh, well, it may be our version of Yugoslavia. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's not very good. And particularly because you see these huge problems, short and long term. And that's a good reason, part of the reason why we wrote this book at this point and took a stand that's pretty controversial. We see big problems in the country. And if you can't begin to solve them and you divide into, uh, into tribes in this way, I mean, let's use another analogy. It's the War of the Roses. And we know how that book and movie yeah. uh, ended. Yeah. So whenever we have a big challenge in America, we try to solve it rather than just describing it and bemoaning it. So what election outcome, White House, House and Senate, do you think it gives us, would give us the most optimism that some of the bad trends could start to change? You know, I, I actually think right now, although we, we've said because we've got parliamentary politics now in a non-parliamentary culture, some of the things we may want to change would en- enable a majority to work. But I actually think a divided system at this point with uh, probably an Obama presidency and uh, and maybe one House that's Republican. A sense that's that for the next four years, <laughs> well, but, you know, if he wins re-election, then you've got four more years. I actually don't think the House of Representatives is going to change no matter what. It's going to go right. more polarized. The Senate, though, I think in a, in a, 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 for two years, knowing Obama will be there for four, you're going to find a center. Uh, may not be enough, and it may not be enough to coerce the House. But if it's two to one, then you've got something different. Tom, I have a slightly different take on that. I, uh, I really believe that divided government doesn't work when the parties are so polarized because the, the opposition party, the president, has every incentive to make him fail and not work on behalf of the government. All the talk about bipartisanship, we must bring them together and build consensus is nonsense. Sadly, it's nonsense. I'd love to have it, but given the nature of the parties, it doesn't happen. So right now, in my view, what we need is what we probably won't get in this election. We need one side or the other to have complete control so, of government so, so you to be like, able to move you like through political, a program. You, you think political monopolies work. I was just saying to EJ, he was on earlier, that uh, I feared political monopolies because it seems that you either have one side or the other lurching too far left or too far right. But you, 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 you say that's good. Uh, not forever, but to get out of the morass we're in right now. Right. Uh, and listen, the Democrats have become a center-left party since Bill Clinton. They went through their crazy days in the 60s and 70s. The Republicans have veered sharply to the right. If Democrats controlled all of government and and could deal with filibusters, my guess is it would be a pretty centrist program that that moves through. And Republicans 
facing that defeat would allow their moderate, pragmatic members to reemerge and and find an agenda for the party that the American people could live with. When I, Democrats had the exact control you described in the first two years of the Obama administration, do you think they governed center left or right, far left? Right. right. Oh, oh there's no question. It was center uh, center left. Take every piece of legislation. The Affordable I'll, Care Act. We're all looking at each other. Let me tell no, you. No question. The I, Affordable I, I, Care uh, Act, where did it come from? It was a Republican um, proposal. Mitt Romney. It was. It not, was a not just Mitt Romney. Idea. Yeah. It was the Republican alternative Harry, to the Clinton plan. Yeah. It's True. markets. It's exchanges. I, I will. We, well, we, that's we, one we, way we, of we, looking we, at we, it. We, that's we would fair. disagree here. I think no, they, Joe, I think it was they a would, conservative idea. Listen, I think the reason the system works is because Bill Clinton got elected in 1992. And I think he went too far left. Voters two years later were able to knock him back. Yeah. Republicans took over in 94, and I've always said, in many ways, we went too far right. Voters answered. They knocked us back to the center, and Bill Clinton gets reelected. And over the next four years, balance of budget for the first time in a generation, four years in a row yeah. for the first time <laughs> uh, since the 1920s. We passed oh, welfare boy. reform. 22 million new jobs are created. Uh, uh, in our book, that's yeah. how it's worked for 235 years. What, you know, you the, disagree with that. Well, I do. Yeah, the, <laughs> the seeds correct. of that, Joe, were, uh, you know, we did get in uh, 96, because Newt wanted uh, to keep a majority, uh, some strong cooperation. The seeds of the balanced budget were set well before that. The 1990 budget agreement, the 1993 economic plan, of which not a single Republican in either house uh, voted for. Okay, wait, hold on a second. No, no, wait, hold on. Then you got impeachment. No, no, wait a second. Stop. How in the world could you say that? I'm I'm sorry. I like both of you guys. Hold on. This is so one-sided, though. You ignore in 1995 what we did in 1995 with Democrats screaming and yelling that we were throwing senior citizens out in the street and killing little babies. You you, you had us saving Medicare when the Medicare trustees said that Medicare was going bankrupt and Bill Clinton shamelessly demagoguing it. You had... One fight after another, John Kasich passing the first balanced budget plan in a generation. I mean, you guys are acting as if the Democrats are the only keepers no, 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 of no. honesty and truth. No, it's how can you not how can you not say the nineteen nineties weren't bipartisan and it wasn't both parties coming together to you, do good things. You had some bipartisanship <laughs> certainly for a period, but you also had Newt set the seeds for the tribal politics that followed. We had impeachment which took us away from where we were right at a social security solution. It was bipartisan. I remember Clay Shaw almost crying because we couldn't get to that point. And then we moved on from there with what became the that was the part parliamentary process that 93, 94 brought in. But you look at them now, you don't have anybody uh, and, and who's willing to work across the aisle. And, I, you know, I, I get to those first two years of the Obama administration. A lot was accomplished. The problem we have now with United Government is we don't have a parliamentary culture. Okay. You have half the system saying it's all illegitimate. you got so, a big problem. And, and my point, I, after I say that, and everybody looks around and says, but wait, you impeached him in 99? My point is, even with a constitutional crisis, President Clinton and Republicans were working behind the scenes and actually still passing some constructive legislation. Joe, by the time the 1997 balanced budget agreement was passed, the budget was balanced as a consequence of the first President Bush and President Clinton, in both cases with with almost no Republican support and, 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 because and, by then and no spending there cuts. were no new taxes yeah. kept them. Clinton, did the not, spending... Did, did 95 and 96 not matter? It did. It did. The Republicans came around after uh, trying to close government down and succeeded <laughs> in it. They came around and <laughs> made a deal on welfare reform. But remember, Clinton ran on that. He ran on Clinton that. vetoed and, welfare reform twice, and he was forced to sign it the third time. No, even it though, changed Even each though time. the Democratic base went absolutely crazy. You know what? We were living in different towns in 1995 and 96. Listen, there's such a myth about the 1997 balanced budget agreement. You know what it was? It was the Children's Health Insurance Program that increased spending. That was the major component. The other was, you know how they save money? They save money by what is now called the doc fix. That is, they had a new formula for for Medicare reimbursement, but alas, they couldn't live with it. And so, so every year, so it, it had nothing to do. They cut 
cut had nothing to do with spending cuts. Gains. No, there's no net spending cuts in that deal. I'm it, sorry. It's it, in the book. Well, I'm not it's talking, even I'm worse not than I'm talking about 1997. <laughs> I'm talking about the real rescissions that Livingston read, ran in 1995. Democrats raised holy hell. You would have thought that we were kicking down doors and throwing grandmas and young kids into the but, street. But let's let's bring it up to we today. We were compared you to know, Bull the, Connor. The, well, let's say, you know, because you guys have talked a lot about extremism on the left. I mean, on the right, we uh, we were compared to Bull Connor because we wanted school lunch uh, programs to grow by four percent instead of six percent. I mean, the, the and I think until we admit that whatever party is out of power in Washington these days is too extreme, the rhetoric is too red hot, and they'll do anything to get back in well, power, I, 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 I don't think this is a persuasive argument. Well, let, let, let's talk about what happened when George W. Bush came into office, okay? Uh, the most contested election, most controversial in 100 years or more. Mm -hmm. The guy could have been destroyed right at the beginning if Democrats had wanted to stomp on his neck with jackboots. Instead, he had two priorities. No child left behind. They saved his presidency by giving him an early big bipartisan victory. It was Ted Kennedy and George Miller. And then it was Democratic votes that brought the tax cuts through. Okay? Now we bring it to today. President wins in a landslide, 70% approval rating, worst economy since the Great Depression, three and a half weeks in, not a single Republican vote. So they so, so they saved his presidency by passing No Child Left Behind? They, gave they him should have done us all victory. a favor and not passed it. <laughs> the, the point is, Democrats really, in that sense, are the party of governing, and they want government to work, and so they can't play quite the opposition role Republicans do. So right. this is a fantastic conversation. We'll have to it the book is... Soon. It's even worse than it looks. You can read an excerpt on our blog, mojo.msnbc.com. Thomas Mann and Norman Ornstein, thank you Guys, so thank much. thank you. Come Thanks back. Delighted to be with you. We'll be right back with more Morning Joe.